Selling IoT for end users, take zero. Um, yeah, actually, a little sidebar. So I had two great conversations this week, like legit. One was with a company based in Ireland that's just like us, right? And then another one was with a company that makes an IoT platform. Uh, it's not even a, it, it's a, it's an open source platform, actually. They have an enterprise solution, but they, what they primarily do is DevOps, which is basically they make the, the infrastructure and the solution that OEM, software OEMs would use to go to market. So I, I develop an IIoT platform, taking data from the edge and getting it into a data lake, and then how do I consume it? These guys do primarily time series data. They built the solution, and then they sell that whole solution, white label, to other companies who use it as their back end, right? That's DevOps, right? So they're basically selling their solution to companies who are going to go resell that solution with their own brand name on it, right? So which is a lot of what Kepware used to do, right? That was originally how Kepware got started. They wrote OPC drivers and then they sold it and it was rebranded white labeled, right? They were in charge of the technology, but their brand was really DevOps. Now they go direct to market, right? But so this company that I, I mean, this is Influx Data, right? So I, they do time series data. They basically, and we're gonna do a whole video on, on Influx Data, but I had this amazing conversation with these guys about they asked the question about historians, you know, and, and so this is a good example, right? So you have your cloud, you have your cloud solution, you have your ERP, you have your MES. I mean, everyone's going to be experts at the automation stack when they get done watching all of our videos, right? But, and then you have PLC HMI, right? So one of the features of SCADA is, a, is historian. So you have, you have SCADA, you have process control, you have alarms. What other features do you have in SCADA? You have notification, you have reporting. What else? What else? Do, what else? What other functionality does SCADA? Certain type of database applications like recipe management. Or right. So we could do recipe, which by the way, most people think that's up here. It's not. It's a SCADA functionality. Why? Because recipe management, you write back to the PLC. MES never writes. That's, most people don't know that. They don't know that MES never actually writes to the, the system. MES is supposed to just consume. But so recipe management is actually in the SCADA layer, right? So what you've got is historian control, alarms, recipe management, reporting, and notification, right? It, you have other stuff as well. You, all, you have HMI functionality, all the human, human machine interface stuff. So historians are really important component of the SCADA system, right? Why? Why does historical data matter? It's what happens. It's your DBR, right? It's your, I can combine pens together to make decisions based on what happened at the moment. I had a failure, I can go back, look at my historian at 701, what were the values of all these various data points, right? So when we were talking to Influx, Influx asked the question, Walker, who do you think, which historian do you think is going to live, is going to be the historian that everyone's using 10 years from now? And I said, none of them. You won't have a historian. Why do you need a historian? Why do I need a separate application that historizes my data when my goal is to take every single data point from everywhere in my organization and ultimately get it here into a data lake? What is a data lake? All of everything. It's all of everything. It's just every single data point there, right? So uh, I, this is everything. This is everything stored, okay? So that's the history of everything. I'm also going to have a unified namespace. This is everything current state, okay? I'm going to have a unified namespace that's everything current state, and I'm going to have a data lake that's everything stored. So what is SCADA's role going to be 10 years from today or 20 years from today when this is our architecture? That is, I have a location. What information gets stored in the data lake? All the history. Of what? Of your sensors and your production runs. What else? Environmental variables. Anything else? shift. Right now, where do you go? Everything if, from every layer of the stack. Everything from every layer of the stack. That's the, that's the difference, right? The data lake has everything. Yeah, right, now, the right now, MES has just the OEE history, right? The ERP has our accounting history. MES will have things like our warehouse management system and you know, what was our inventory at given times. Right now, all of those things have their own data stores. They have their own data models. 
what's the reason that we can't write machine learning algorithms that are comparing our ERP data and our MES data? It's data silos. The data's completely siloed. They are, and what is a data silo? It's not that they're in separate locations. Who gives a crap? We can connect them together. It's that they're in completely different formats. Someone created a data model specific to that MES system, and all MES data is not stored the same way. I mean, look at Sepasoft's MES modules. The OEE 1.0 data model, that is the back end, is completely different from the OEE 2.0 data model. You can't even take two MES uh, data models from the same company and compare the data together. Now imagine that you've got, now, now imagine that I have three different MES systems because of mergers and acquisitions. How do I compare the data of all my plants together? The answer is a unified namespace for real-time data and a data lake for everything else. What's the advantage of a data lake? Does the data format matter when you dump data into a data lake? No, it doesn't. Why? Because we have this piece of the stack that's got the machine learning and AI algorithms. So there are, you know, if you want to know the value of AI, these algorithms can consume undefined data and establish relationships. That's literally what the algorithms do. You don't need, <laughs> the algorithms, you know what machine learning means? The algorithm learns the process. So when you deploy a machine learning solution, what you are doing is plugging undefined data into a machine learning, into one of your selection of maybe 20 or 30 different machine learning algorithms, whether it's Bayesian or, you know, or any of the other uh, artificial intelligence algorithms. And they, that program learns all the context that needs about that data. Then you can deploy analytics to the edge if you want to. What's going to happen with our stack? This is why Rockwell's doomed. It, unless they change the way, you, Rockwell wants a unified stack. 